next thing you're going to do once you get that pulley off is you need to detach the reservoir. As I say, if you've got a remote one, this might be quite simple and you remove the hose. You need to get these clamps off. This is quite easy, um, but you do need two hands for it. Number one, use a pair of, uh, I don't know, plumber's pliers. I don't know what these are called actually, jaws, um, to get some pressure. And then number two is you will need, and I don't have a screwdriver to hand, um, something to pull that tab out as you move it forward so that it overcomes the lip off this. And then do that on both sides and that comes up quite nicely and you end up with this thing in your hand and both of these. That's what it looks like if you want a reference. Next up is the snap ring for the backing plate. Uh, so there's really a couple of things. First off, have a mallet and also have something like an Allen key. So what you need to do is you need to get something that is the same size or less than that hole and poke it through so it hits the back of the snap ring and then give it a tap and you should see that thing start to come free and you can just pull it out as you, as you work your way around. Um, thing to note here is this thing won't immediately release. Um, it is only held in by really friction against the side and maybe a rubber seal that sits beneath it. But if you're doing this for the first time and your pump is 30 years old, um, it'll have more resistance to coming out, probably because of just a buildup of gunk and grime. Um, there is no other advice I can give you other than, and it seems counterintuitive, to keep hitting this with a mallet. Use a mallet, don't use a hammer because you just start damaging stuff. Um, and just keep hitting it until it starts popping up proud, at which point you can you can shimmy the thing out. Once you've done that, this is what the backing plate looks like. Um, you'll be faced with the inside of this. You'll see this and this. Um, what you will need to do is there is a seal that sits in that second groove there. You need to pull it out because it makes it quite difficult to get anything out. Um, then remove these. You can actually just give it a shake. Just make sure you don't lose the dowels. Um, you can see two here, but actually there's an additional one. Let me see if I can get my finger in the frame. See that little hole down there that sits in there. I've lost that. It's a three mil by 18 mil dowel. So I've just ordered a couple from Aku to see how that fits. But um, for now, this pump is out of action. Um, as you work through, this will be the next thing that comes out, along with those two dowels, as I mentioned. And then there's a spring at the bottom, plus the dowel that was at the bottom. You then need to flip this over and you will be presented with the main seal. So I'm not going to take this out of the bag, but it looks like that. Um, it is held in by a circlip, um, which slots in around the front. So you need a pair of circlip pliers in order to get those out. I've got this set. I've got to be honest, they kind of did a job, but they're not great. Um, don't know whether you can tell that one's lost the tip. Those are okay. These are starting to bend slightly. I mean, they, they do a job, and if you're looking for something cheap and cheerful, those will do it. But um, you need them to squeeze this together and pop it out the front. And once you've done that, you should be able to tap on the shaft, which will literally sit like that in the back of it. And that'll come out complete with this sat on the seal. What you will also seal, see, even, is the main shaft seal, which is basically a, a press fit in there. Um, the only way of getting that out is to take a screwdriver, locate where it sits behind it, and then just tap it out. Don't worry about destroying it, because you're going to basically replace this one. You can't find a like-for-like -like seal. Um, companies have changed over the years. So this is the next thing that you're going to need.
you need an Edelman 8900 power steering repair kit. I only found that out through trial and error. The bag's kind of missing some components, but it comes with a new shaft seal, a new bearing, and it doesn't have all of the, the seals in there because I've used a couple. But you'll have a seal for this piece here. So you can see that sits there. You'll have a back seal, which replaces the one that sits up here. And then you'll have a O-ring seal that goes here and one in there, which I haven't shown you yet. If you make a mistake like I did, so I bought the 8624 and these both came from the States, so it's quite a costly import. Some of the seals are interchangeable, so you can keep them. Um, not all is lost. But despite me saying that all of these are pretty much exactly the same type of power steering pump, um, there must be some differences because that main seal is too small. Um, yeah, drops in, doesn't fit. So there you go. Key point, 8900 Edelman. There are other equivalent brands available. Um, for the purposes of this video, that's the one that I found that works. So you can go and have a look at that. Um, if Edelman don't do it, try and find some sort of equivalent for another brand. When you get the shaft out, you're going to want to pull the bearing off of it. Again, that's press fit. Really, you just need a puller and just get on the end of it. Uh, nice and tight and then just push it. Um, might be best if you use some grease just to kind of assist it on its way but it will eventually slide off if you can find it. Um, as I said the Edelman kit comes with the replacement. Um, you can if you want to go out to market look for other ones but you're effectively looking for a high temperature application one. I bought these simply because I didn't think the kit would have them um, but as you can see there's a number there if you want to go and have a look at something else outside of what Edelman supplies. Edelman's is perfectly acceptable. In one second. Oh, don't drop it. There is a DNS, which I've never heard of before. But generally speaking, they're all going to be high temperature bearings that do the job.